Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing AMD's future CPUs and GPUs. Did you just build a shiny new PC? Then you'll need a genuine copy of Windows 10 so you can personalize the system and of course get rid of that annoying activation watermark. We've partnered with WhoKeys to give you guys great discounts on Windows 10 keys and of course they can be fully upgraded to Windows 11 too. You can get 30% off using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several of these keys in the past using a personal non-RGT affiliated account and they've worked flawlessly with quick delivery. If you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $15 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, check the links out in the video description below. As many of you know, Zen 4 is going to be utilizing TSMC's 5NM process, but for quite some time we've believed that 3NM will be the home of Zen 5 and other products in AMD's GPU lineup as well. However, there is a rather interesting tweet from Grayman, who claims that TSMC's 3NM process is having, let's say, some oopses. And therefore, AMD will be actually migrating Zen 5 and, again, other products as well, probably, on to the 4NM process from TSMC. Now, I want to say that I actually heard this news myself a couple of days ago, although I am fully crediting Grayman for this. However, yeah, we kind of had a few... <laughs> issues on the channel and we'll be discussing that later on you know in the closing because i don't want to start eating up her uh, you know news time for that but yeah basically speaking it does seem like tsmc are having issues with their free nm process and one of my sources has told me pretty much the same thing a couple of days ago and now it seems that grayman is also mentioning the same thing again now of course ultimately these are rumors right so it's possible that it won't be you know come to fruition and 3nm is absolutely fine and you know in a couple of days time lisa could make a statement and say yeah everything's great and our roadmap is proceeding as expected and zen 5 is going to be on the 3nm process and we're going to be creating zen 6 utilizing black hole technology on the other hand it's interesting that as far as i know anyway my source and grayman have absolutely nothing in common with one another and I'm told basically the same thing. Um, I tend to be quite hesitant of putting information out when I've only got a single source telling me things because, you know, people can get things wrong at the end of the day. And it's going to be very interesting if this is the case because Intel's, you know, future processors are doing a better. The main problem at the moment I'm hearing for their... Uh, processors is basically yields although apparently again they are doing better and given the fact that intel wants to be you know a powerhouse in manufacturing it's going to be really curious how all of this comes together i'll also note actually on the 5nm process of tsmc nvidia are putting billions of us dollars allegedly into procuring let's say their fair share of allotment for uh, TSMC. And again, I've kind of been, I think I've mentioned it actually even in a couple of videos in passing, but I have been hearing that NVIDIA want to get a really good supply of uh, 5NM capacity. Now, the thing of it is, the good news is for AMD and uh, NVIDIA, of course, is that Apple are basically relinquishing the older quote-unquote processors as they start to move towards their own product or move their own products towards excuse me you know more advanced processors like free nm so that will definitely help but ultimately <laughs> it's gonna be interesting um as pretty much everyone and their mother are just trying to get hold of tsmc's 5nm process and again this is one of the reasons that i do kind of support intel's manufacturing because it's not the best for the industry when basically there's only one player in town. Now, obviously, there are others that are manufacturing products, and I don't want to start turning this video into a whole thing, exploring all of the you know ins and outs of Samsung versus TSMC and so on and so on. But yeah, Samsung have had a plethora of issues, of course, with their own processes. And basically speaking, there's a reason that everyone is going towards TSMC. I also wanted to put out a small update concerning Zen 4. Um, I was going to actually turn this into a separate video, but 
quite honestly, I just figured I might as well throw it in here because there are just a few small updates concerning what I've been hearing. So according to, you know, all of the rumors thus far, and again, I'm basically reconfirming this, I'm hearing it's going to be Q3, late Q3 for Zen 4 to be launched. I'm saying this because there were some, uh, let's say, more recent murmurs that we could actually be seeing it much earlier. I think it was like April or something like that. But yeah, as far as I understand, this is simply not the case. Now, you may also remember that AMD have kind of actually shown off Zen 4, although it's important to realize that they were showing it in Halo Infinite, but they weren't giving us exactly super in-depth technical analysis as to the performance. They weren't being like, okay, well, this is Zen 4 versus you know, Zen 3, and these are the performance, diff you know, they weren't doing that. But what they did tell us is that it was getting 5 gigahertz across all of the cores. Now, personally, I have heard that at the moment they have not settled on clock frequency, which kind of makes sense because at the end of the day, we're not discussing retail silicon here. I have heard one source who told me that they possibly may shoot for 5.5 gigahertz, but and I really want to stress that, this is not all cores. It's probably single core only. Personally, I'm not that hopeful that they're going to reach this clock frequency. I'm probably guessing it's going to be more like 5.3-ish. Um, I would love for it to be higher, obviously. Speaking of clock frequencies, I did want to touch on uh, IPC and performance just briefly because we've heard so many different numbers concerning the performance gains over Zen 3. Now I want to stress this is over Zen 3 vanilla. We are not referring to the V cache derivatives or anything like that. We are basically referring to, you know, the, the vanilla plain old Zen 3. Not that that's bad or anything. Um, but I'm actually hearing it's going to be around 40%. But it is imperative to realize two things. One, this is one T, one thread performance. This is not all core performance. This is, to my understanding, core for core. Second point is this is inclusive of clock frequency and IPC gains. To my understanding, honestly, a lot of the performance advantages that we're going to see Zen 4 really enjoy are going to be in gaming. Um, I'm hearing that Raptor Lake is going to be actually quite a good match for Zen 4. Um, but gaming AMD are probably going to really enjoy a nice advantage. And, you know, Raptor Lake has had a pretty meaningful uh, number of changes in the cache. We've discussed a couple of them previously on the channel. And one of the big differences, one of the key differences we're going to see with Zen 4 is it's going to basically double the L2 cache. So we're going to see one megabyte per core. So basically from 512 to one megabyte. Of course, like anything, none of this is confirmed by AMD, but it's pretty likely, at least in my opinion, that this is going to occur. And there are actually a number of benefits to this. The most obvious is that we're going to be shifting from uh, DDR4 to DDR5 memory, and obviously there's going to be higher latencies of DDR, um, DDR5, excuse me. So that could also be quite important, basically more local cache, and obviously the overall cache system of Zen 4 is also going to see quite an overhaul to my understanding. And the final thing to close the video out with, of course, is what the hell happened with the channel? Well, yeah, it seemed like we did actually get kind of hacked. Now, to my understanding, it did not affect the content at all. We actually did a quick look and there didn't seem to be anything with the content. All of that seems to be okay. The channel name got changed, although I managed to restore that. And, you know, inevitable questions, what happened? Well, honestly, we're not 100% certain. Um, I know for a fact that my two-factor authentication did not get triggered. And we also, you know, are not using an easy password. It's not like the password for the channel is cats are cool 22 or something like that. It's a pretty obnoxious password, to be honest with you. And furthermore, you know, it's not like I've used that in a number of other places. Um, for those who don't know, Amy, who does a lot of the editing, and she also does some of the content as well, and myself, we live in quite different areas of the, you know, the country, basically. And uh, we also checked both our systems. There didn't seem to be anything hinky with either of our systems. You know, we do the normal thing. And I actually have some separation of church and state as well with my systems. Like, I tend to use a different computer basically for doing my own personal crap versus channel stuff. Just, again, for some separation. And 
I keep repeating this, but didn't seem to find anything. There were actually, I did a community post um, and a number of you mentioned the fact that other channels had gotten hacked as well. So I honestly don't know. I spoke to my, um, you know, YouTube rep slash, you know, MCM guy and he basically went through, we reset everything and hopefully everything will be good. Although I did want to just spend one moment to thank everyone for blowing up my Discord. Like I, I actually don't use Discord that much. I actually kind of have it open. <laughs> don't check it. But seriously, so many of you messaged me at once and I got emails and God knows what else. I, I literally knew within like seconds. I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm not normally this loved. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know, you know, um, you know everything's good. And uh, thanks to everyone who did, you know, DM and message and email and everything else. It's, it's you know, it's kind of strange to be honest with you. Um, I know, like we're kind of closing in our hundred thousand subscribers. And can I just say, like, you know, seriously, that freaks me the shit out. Um, I know I don't normally swear on the channel, but seriously, it, it freaks me out, dude. Um, and yeah, it's it's really weird. I can't say it any other way. Like, it's weird to me um, that we've got so many subscribers and people and everything else. And, yeah, like, the one of the reasons that we actually tackled this so damn quickly is because I actually was talking to my MCM rep for something entirely different. Like, I'd been messaging him uh, because he was mentioning about maybe me appearing at a... Um, like an Expo Comic Con thing as like a guest. I don't know if I should say that, but whatever. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. That feels really weird for me to be a guest, to be honest. Like, I don't, I don't really know what I want to say. Like, I wouldn't mind attending. I think that could be cool, assuming I'm free those days. Um, but yeah, it it kind of was like I was just talking to them, and uh, then I started to get one messages from you guys, and I was like. Um, okay. <laughs> I guess it kind of works out that I was speaking to him. So yeah, um, again, it's kind of weird, to be honest, that we're even large enough now to be hacked. And it's also really, I don't know, like... Hmm, I don't know, Just it's, it's, it's just bloody weird as well to have so many people who care, if that makes any sense, and have so many messages of support. So again, I, you know, just... Cutting through the mushy stuff for a moment. Thanks everyone to uh, you know. Thanks to everyone who has uh, messaged, and uh, it's pretty, yeah, pretty humbling. With that said, I don't really have much more to say in this video. Um, I'm gonna go now. So take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. And uh, one last thing, actually, uh, the storms have been absolutely brutal in the UK. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone's doing okay. And uh, Hopefully everyone's been, you know, safe. So with that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.